rejected this notion of being. Yeah. Uh, and there are there are passages in the, in the New Testament that say these kinds of things. Don't 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 run to me all the time. Don't go. Uh, don't don't worship anyone apart from God. Keep it real. You yeah, know. Just on that point. What you said there, we agree with, worship yeah. only God. Yeah. But you're that's using right. your experience to say that Jesus is part of God. And that's where we're disagreeing, because we're saying, if you stick to Revelation itself, all the old patriarchs, Moses, Abraham, Noah, they never said Jesus. Yeah, no. So how could Jesus be God if they never mentioned him? They, they have their own. The funny thing is that there, is, there are aspects of the Jesus story all over the Old Testament. That's another... That's another thing, there's another question, but you can see where the Jesus story came about through the Old Testament in a very large part. Um, the Jews would disagree with that, and so would uh, Zion. Well, Jesus would disagree with that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, so if I, if I were to ask you, did any of the patriarchs... Jesus never existed in my, my worldview. Jesus didn't exist. As a person, historically, no one has a clue about Jesus in his time. No one knew about... What do you mean he didn't exist? He didn't exist. What does that mean? He was not, never in the Sea of Galilee. When you're talking about fishing for men, it's actually stuff that's going on in the heavens. It's oh, the Gnosticism. That's the Gnostic yeah. view. No, no, the Gnostics believe in Jesus. Google. I don't I'm know about him. This at the moment is very interesting. I've, I've known about this for a while. Every single... Scriptures uh, in the stars. Scripture in the stars. The, the, the tetramorph, the idea of the great beast of Revelation. All you need to do is look up into the eternal heavens. He's right there. Well, what do you see in the stars? system of stars. Um, uh, four constellations that, that are the beast of Revelation. What, what does that tell you? Draco, all right, um, what does that tell you? What do the stars tell you? The, the, the stars were the backdrop for many of the stories that, like the as above, so below kind of aspect of, of where the stories came from. They came from the heavens, they came from the stars. Jesus is the solar, essentially a, a, a bit of a solar overlay of a, of a story that's always been with us. In Hercules, what I, but he just I said Jesus exist. didn't exist. While, no, that's right. He, he exists as a force, as a consciousness within creation that is felt inside, in, in, innately in us. Did you, Mary exist? You can John say did, the same thing. You can read the Bible. Did, did Mary exist? No. Well, no? Where, where, did, where did she come from? What do you mean, where did she come from? From my parents, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but wait, I mean, if you're being Joseph, Mary, the brothers of Jesus, um, so many of these yeah. characters, like John the Baptist existed in history, we know about him, we know about James the Just, right, the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. No, but if, if, James, if Mary... So mention Jesus, why not? Hold on, Mary did exist, right? I don't know. What do you it's, mean you don't know? We don't know, is the thing. Okay, did Joseph exist? The, the Bible tells us that... Did, did Joseph exist? Outside of the Bible, we have no knowledge of, we have no knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, outside the Bible, we got it in the Quran. Well, I'm sure when did the Quran come out? Oh, when did the New Testament come? Well, exactly. Exactly. So just find because... Out. I mean, we can find out... When no, no, but you, if you're going to use that logic, just because the New Testament came maybe thousands of years after Abraham, for example, does it mean Abraham didn't exist? It's usually in history, when you're talking about his, the historical record and very big, um, big names in history, people who commanded armies, um, you know, what fed 5,000 with a few meager bits of bread and two fish, usually that's going to create crowds. And if, if the sun darkens for three hours on the day of, of Jesus' death, and then, um, what is it, the, you know, there are rabbis in their tombs that get up and walk around according to uh, Matthew, like these, these are zombies walking around Jerusalem. Yeah, we don't believe that. Nobody believes that because <laughs> it's not true, it didn't happen. In fact, only Matthew wrote about it. Yeah, not, not the other Gospels. Sure, sure. Okay, so those are anecdotes that yeah. we differ and we definitely yeah, is, don't believe. Where, where but the fact, the fact that Mo, that uh, the you know, if you were going to go just by historic records, you don't find any of Moses either. I think we we know who he is. But I know. no, no, on historic, purely on, purely on historic records, did Moses exist? Yeah, but he was. Which historic Moses. record mentioned? Moses. He was an Egyptian late dynasty pharaoh. Yeah. And that, the idea which the which pharaoh was called Moses? Yeah, I, the thing is, I, know I think you're all over the place, man. The <laughs> and current and modern archaeology is beginning to prove this thesis, and it's strong. You know what I mean? So we have Jacoban, we have Mamekra. Let's stick with Moses. Which pharaoh was called Moses? None of them. 
Moses is yeah after Norton and Aaron. No, he wasn't called Moses. Yeah, it's the same, this, same deal. He had the story of that in, in fact, these pharaohs which you're talking about, yeah. they believed in an afterlife which is completely different to sure. what you, I don't know, even you as an agnostic would actually deny. The idea of the Egyptian Book of the Dead and on Osiris, the, the, the Assyrian copy of the story of Jesus Christ is, is very big. He was a dying and rising uh, God. Uh, I think we should, stick to, we should stick to one conversation because if you go all over the place, so if you have any historic record of Moses, then tell us, otherwise, just speculating that he might be this pharaoh or that pharaoh is irrelevant, okay? So look, if you're going to hold the Bible, I don't know if you hold the Bible as a as a credible historic record, or is it just something that you would read and not the consider Old it to be? The has a basis in truth, yes, but it's been filtered through. Only the Old Testament? Or about the new, what about the New Testament? The New Testament is a basically a rehash of the Old Testament. Uh, Moses, so, so Moses and Jesus are very mythologically uh, linked. How? Oh, all kinds of them. Uh, I can show you. Did Moses have a birth there, through a virgin? There are many. Was was there a virgin birth in the case of Moses? No. No. I don't think so. Okay. There are so many parallels, and oftentimes they. Give me one. Give me one that you can think of. Go on. Uh, I could. I could make get loads. But Moses wasn't uh, God. Uh, you believe Jesus to be God, right? He said no, Jesus, Jesus didn't even exist. <laughs> He's not a person. No, but that's right. There is a. The, what Moses is a person? Man, yes. Okay, no, but still, but Moses but, is, is not celestially yeah. God. What, was Moses a person, according to you? So, where's the parallel? <laughs> I, get, I'll sh I can show you if you want. Let me just get. No, but these, these are things that we know about Jesus and Moses, and there are many things that differ between them. For example, Moses led armies, yes? He was, he was someone who was in charge of, 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 a, of a kingdom and so on and he used to lead armies. Uh, Jesus didn't do any of that. Jesus was more or less a pacifist in the New That's Testament. Yeah, yeah. And this is a, another thing about this, the wonder of these documents, because it tells you where Mark was writing, what Mark tells you and what Luke tells you. Yeah. Luke is a more augmented story. Luke, the Lucan story is Romanized. That's why you find so many mythological aspects from the Greco-Roman world in Luke. That's because Luke wasn't a Luke wasn't one of the disciples. I know I'm going all over the place. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, um, let's let's discuss the God of Moses, Jesus, and Abraham. Yeah. Do you think they all believed in the same God? Um, you know, Saint Augustine once said, "What we now call the Christian religion has always been with us in other religions." What does that mean? What existed before is right with us now in Christianity, and it always existed. I think it was on to the fact that there's so many, there are so many pagan mythologies that were essentially saying the same thing. Okay, you know, so and they and they out when you say pagan mythologies, do, are you saying that Moses actually believed in some, or Jesus believed in some pagan mythology? Is that what you say? Yeah, they are pagan mythologies. 100%. They always have been, always were. The virgin birth happened with Romulus. The virgin birth happened with Osiris and Ra. The virgin birth is oh, Perseus. Well, Alexander the Great had a virgin birth. Um, Plato had his virgin birth. This was the mythological world of, at the time. I'm talking about the god that they believed in. Yeah, you know, it's the same. You know what I mean? So Zeus is not the same as Yahweh, is he? The mythotype tells you where the ideas came from, and it's the easiest explanation for what we see in the, in the myth, mythological. So, religion. is it possible that you could be believing in a pagan mythology as well? Um, I think, I think, and, and here's the thing: you can't test this, but when you have revelations of the spirit that comes into the yeah, but that's your subjective claim. Exactly. We can't really yeah, sure. ascertain any of that. Right. A guy could be smoking some weed and he could be telling us the same thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. But, I mean, I'm, I'm writing a book now called Parallel and Mythicism, right? Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it links... I think this is the thing with uh, Gnosticism because there's a lot of mythology involved in it. Both Moses and Jesus, yeah. So you have a look at... 
these are oh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff on the internet which we could. No, 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 no. no. These are straight from the books. From across these are both. Uh, it's it's uh, Gnostic. Gnostic. Okay, well, I mean, Moses <laughs> and Jesus. And this, the and this, they agree that. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? These are the consensus that Jesus exists as a story. They're linked, they're passionate. He doesn't believe that. Okay, but the thing is, the intuition is that Jesus is the Messiah. Moses 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 is the Messiah
yeah. So yeah, it's it's goddess roots in Gnosticism, maybe in uh, Greek mythology as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised other mythologists too. But the important point which uh, Brother Sabur asked you is that if you look at throughout the Old Testament, which you hold highly in regards compared to the New Testament, is the message of monotheism. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at Deuteronomy 6.4, when Moses says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, what do you understand by this one? Do you mean like in a sense which is uh, an indivisible, yes. unique an God? Source. Yeah. Uncreated. But as a multiplicity or as a, as a, as a unitarian God? A unity, yes. As a no, one, not unity, unitarian point. God. Uh, as a, a, as a so indivisible, that means he doesn't have persons, there are not multiple persons yes, in the Godhead. So we don't believe in this triad or trinity yeah. or no, triune god there's a thing there that's kind of it, it, it expands itself out and if you want to talk about I mean, I where does it expand itself show me where which prophet in the entire old testament advocated anything other than a unitarian god a monotheistic pure monotheistic god pure monotheistic. Well, the, the, here's the deal like the egyptians believed in a monotheism yeah but i'm not asking outside the old testament i'm saying within the old testament minor nine or seven lesser netters that created, that began to form... You, you have drifted outside the Old Testament again. Within the Old Testament, did any prophet advocate a God who is anything other than pure mono, monotheistic? You keep well, drifting outside the Bible know, all the time. Know, Egyptians, you, Hindus... You, all I can prove to you quite easily what? that the Old Testament patriarchs were Egyptian. Or basically in no, no, a, show me where in the Bible it says that. Well, it's all over the Bible. Show it's me one place in the Bible. Kings. It's the whole of the story of... The question the, is, show me where they worshipped anyone other than a monotheistic yeah, God. Yeah. Pure monotheism. Proof. I can prove this you keep saying you'll prove, but you haven't brought anything from the Bible yet. He, he's saying, I think there's a miscommunication. Because what you do is he's you keep going outside the Bible. He's saying something different. He's saying, all right, wait, 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 what's the proof that these patriarchs who you claim are Egyptian, worshipped anyone apart from God. No, they, that's right. They, they saw a multiplicity of lesser parts of the one God in inter interaction. Show me from the Bible where it says that, any prophet that God. Because this is your claim, it's not from the Bible. Sure. I, I get what you're saying. and we're, we're You have to concede that this... That from the Bible, even any language you use from the Bible, it has to be from the Bible. If it's not there, then you are just saying something which is outside the Bible. You know, there, there, are, two con there are two ways to talk about God in the Bible, right? Um, Hashem and Elohim. Hashem is oneness, is that one. Amplitude, infinite yeah. oneness. And Elohim is a plural, it is many, many things. It is the one and the all. Do you know Elohim can also be used for men, for angels, for yes. false gods? Yeah, but it's a so plural. it's it's not it's not it's it just means it just means it's deity. It's not categorical. No, no. By the way, it's not it's not plural. Do you know Moses is Moses? If you read at Exodus seven one, it says Moses was Elohim to the Pharaoh. What does that mean? Was it plural or singular? Moses was Elohim to the Pharaoh. Exodus seven one. I give you the reference. So your theory that Elohim is plural is false. No, no, it's not false. It's only for people. It if people don't know the language, Hebrew language, yeah. in Hebrew language, it's very similar to the Semitic languages. Yes. The singularity of plural depends on the verb that's used in, alongside the noun. So when you talk about Elohim for Moses only, Moses is one man or many? One man. Yeah. So why was the term Elohim used for him? But he was he was called Elohim himself. Yes. Because he's one he's one person who came down out of that one spot and became uh, now now you're now you're going back into outside the Bible. Sorry. You keep yeah, doing that. You know what you do? You you talk about things from the Bible and then you extrapolate to things which are outside the Bible. You can't just mix and match. It's not a candy store. So Jesus, so God creates in the beginning, right? He creates a multiplicity of different things. Okay, and they are creation itself. They are apart from God, but they also they are also kind of of God. Right? No, they are not. So they when you are a creation, when God. you are a creation of God, yeah. you have no part of God in it, because God, by definition, is eternal. He was yeah. not created. Not what you're saying is something which is completely different. 
the sun, sorry, he created the earth and the heavens. Yeah, so these are yes. the creations of God. Okay, so they are implicit in his, and he saw that it was good, and he rested and chilled on the seventh day. Okay. Those, those things were, so so let, me, let me use the same analogy. Let's say there's a baker. He bakes a cake and he says the cake is good, and then he takes a rest after baking the cake. Yes. Is the cake the baker? No, but no. That's, your, that's, that's basically your. That's, that's that is. <laughs> split himself up. Who split himself up? So, I see he's going again into this it's, it's, mythology. But logically, a good analogy. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Hebrew, the whole of the Hebrew alphabet, uh, the alphabet, right? Um, what you can do with the that, the alphabet very quickly is one shape that's seen from different view, view, viewpoints. And that one shape can you can fit on the human hand. It's actually a physics. It's a, it's a shape of pure physics. The Taurus, I have no idea what you're on about. I know, right? Yeah. This is the beauty okay, how many letters system. are there in the Hebrew alphabet? 22. Right. How is it one shape? That's it. It's one shape. How is it it's one shape? From different, so Aleph or bait to break open. Right. Are you explaining the meaning? And, How is it one shape? We, we're able to see now that there's um, a beautiful reference to the physical world in the letters, but also the, the way that the language My friend, how is it one shape? You still haven't answered that. It's an amazing projective um, I don't think you're making any sense for, when, you, no, no, when no, you're saying words right, that, that, that does not correspond words. to the language in this scenario. You're saying they're one shape. Yes. How is the alphabet, the even idea, if it's 22 letters, how is it one one shape? Because if it was one shape, then you couldn't write a word. Forget about a sentence. That's what Aleph Bey is doing, creating a distinction between inside or the all and then a breaking. Open. Have you moved into Kabbalah now? Is that from Kabbalah? This is just the way that he has yeah. So this is, you know, this is what they do. The symbolism in Kabbalah is what he's bringing in now. Nothing to do with the Torah. And I know we're going You're going everywhere. But the point we're trying to get back to again and again yeah it's is the monotheism that, yeah. is that no, look, it's, no, it's, it's, monotheism. It's no but you don't you said you you said you got divinity in you that's not monotheism like male and female i believe god is a oneness is both is god has got nothing to do with gender yeah he doesn't he doesn't need to yeah but no but if you believe this look look you did he not say that you have divinity within you okay how is that monotheism because that Jesus has spoken and, and we come into the hearts of believers or the believers. You said Jesus doesn't exist. You said Jesus doesn't exist. And, and, and How is he coming to you? Of himself. Jesus right. didn't exist according to you. How is he come inside you? No, that's right. <laughs> Jesus doesn't exist in corporeal in a, in a, in a historical form. A, are you guys going to the pub? Where are you going? Pub. I'll come with you. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll want to come with. Two yeah. minutes. One minute. One minute. Sorry. Um, yeah. Look, look, uh, the, the, the point which I was making in the beginning, and I think Hashim's making as well, is look, fundamentally, yeah. whichever way you look at it, monotheism is the message of the Old Testament. It's fine. Right? And yes. monotheism is the most logical method, it's okay, that's uh, message, but, but with Jesus, as you're claiming to be divine, yes. that goes against monotheism. Forget Jesus, he's saying he's divine, he's saying everyone is yes. divine. Well, no, Not only Jesus. Because of Jesus. In a bit of divinity, we can have the experience of the divine one and the Jesus, the Christ, Krishna consciousness that, that helps us expand our consciousness. You know, Jesus, you haven't answered the question Sabur asked you. How, do, how would you reconcile the fact that Jesus himself worshipped God? I don't believe Jesus existed, but I believe Jesus comes as a spirit and hits us in the heart. Does, does the Father exist for you? Thank you so much. Does right, we'll do this again, yeah? <laughs> you will. Yeah, all right, take care, mate. Take care. Um, it was great speaking to you. I, yeah, yeah. I would want to know more about this Gnosticism. Religion, uh, Gnosticism. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy to explore. I've got books, screens, and no, right? Can you show, show us the book? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Have you seen this before? No, I haven't. This is Scripture a, so, in the Stars. And this is just a book that helps me understand. What's the author? A guy called Marty Leeds. So all of these things that are motifs in the, um, the great New Flash. Testament, so yeah, crossing the feeding the five thousand, the parables, many of the parables, um, death and resurrection as a as a as something that's imprinted on the heavens as well. Where wow, look up into the heavens, you see the stars conveying a story. So you're reading this. You should also read a, uh, the Quran. Would you want a copy yeah, of the Quran? Copy? Got one.
three or four at home. Yeah. But you, should, you should read it. Why don't you read them and then we can discuss from that next time? How about that? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, take care. Thank you. Nice one. Bye -bye. Well, I thought you know maybe it's good if you give a message that when it comes down to pure monotheism, it's something that you can't escape. Whether you look at Old Testament, New Testament, or logic. Yeah? Yes. Even what I was the point I was trying to make is even from a metaphorical point of view, even if he's saying like Jesus didn't exist as a real person and he's a metaphor, yeah. even from that point of view, monotheism makes more sense than Jesus being divine. Absolutely. That's the reason he was all over the place. You know, when you start saying that, oh, he came into my dream or seeing in the stars I, I had a or a revelation, you know, all these things are just only he can prove to himself. Yeah. It is not something which is objective. You know, people have such subjective experiences in every religion. Forget about religion. In fact, people who don't even believe in God might have such experiences. So whom are you going to believe? You know, you will be always in confusion, like the way he was. Because he, he said many times, oh, we are going all over the place. He couldn't focus on one topic at a time. And every time we asked him, he would go somewhere far beyond he, he, the actual he had to do that because he didn't have the solid grounding yeah exactly but also one of the things i said to him and i want you to comment on this is he went from atheism mm. to christianity because christianity is what's been around in the religion of his ancestors but it's not even christianity some sort of gnosticism which normal christians don't believe in i said to him you shouldn't just stop at the first religion that you come across when you yeah absolutely yeah. he said he has copies of the quran the fact that he just has them doesn't make any difference unless he reads them. Yeah, yeah. So you need to obviously he thinks about it. Yeah, you need to explore more. And Gnosticism is is something which the early I Christians I rejected. I don't think he's a Gnostic, though. Well, he, he, he is actually from many of them because they would they would incorporate many of the mythological beliefs, and they from the language he uses, he does have a lot lot of Gnostic ideas. It's not Christianity. So I wouldn't call it Christianity. No, yeah, Gnostics believe Jesus was real. There's different Gnostics, so it's not one monolith. Within Gnosticism, they have different branches as well. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not uh, grounded, as you say. And that's the reason you would start believing in all this mythological stuff and start to make sense. Because a lot of what he said is actually from Hinduism. Oh, really? Yes, that the divine within you. So you know, when you hear a Hindu say Namaste, he's literally saying, I bow down to the divine in you. And this is what this guy was believing in. He was actually making a Hindu symbol. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's what you believe in, because you believe in all this, uh, especially mentioned reincarnation as well. Yes, and that God is one, This he mentioned consciousness, which is the Brahman within the Hindu, that this the only reality is the ultimate Brahman. And this is, so yeah, a lot of Hinduism, uh, maybe Greek mythology, maybe Gnostics, which they took from all these different combinations. You know what's interesting, Hashem? Yeah. This is popular nowadays. I don't think it's popular, but maybe it's new growing. Age, new age the, people yeah, the interest. Love it. Yeah, you're right. The because interest no is rules. gaining. And, yeah. and you can't be wrong. Yes. Because you don't have to prove anything. Everything goes. Yes, yeah, so new age people love this stuff. True. May Allah give them hidayah. That's all we can we can say. Him again. Yeah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure you guys subscribe to Dawa Wise and to Brother Sabur Ahmed's channel as well. Jazakallah khairan.